Hi everybody, you might love a micro topic area, but then when it comes to the exam, the way the question is formed is very awkward, it's tricky for you, and it puts you off, and you think, oh, but I've revised it so well, I now can't answer this question, it's such bad luck for me, how could this happen to me? No, that should not happen for you. The way for that not to happen is to make sure you're revising ready for awkward questions as well as easy ones from certain topic areas for micro essays. Let's in this video go through certain topics where questions can be awkward and make sure you know arguments you can write in those awkward essays regardless, starting with market failure. Tricky market failure essays might say, discuss whether government should intervene or not. So what are your arguments in favor? What are your arguments against? Well, in favor of government intervention is if there is a market failure. Go into the market failure and go into how there is a misallocation of resources that can then justify government intervention. There might be appropriate government policies as well to fix a given market failure. There might be barriers to market forces working well in solving their own kind of market failures. So for example, inelastic demand or inelastic supply it might be preventing markets getting to an appropriate equilibrium, which is giving benefits to both consumers and producers. But if you're arguing no, like government intervention shouldn't happen, or we should be wary of it, maybe markets are working well. The functions of price are working well, getting the market to an equilibrium, which is serving consumers and producers really well, without significant barriers. Or maybe markets could work well in the future. Think about the major benefits of market forces, how technology might advance, innovation can occur, competition may occur in the future, which could actually solve whatever issues there might be in the short run in the market. Or you might argue there's a serious risk of government failure, kind of putting you off government intervention, or at least certain policies that you think could carry a higher risk of government intervention. If the question goes the other way and it says discuss whether markets should be left to allocate resources towards something, or if it says discuss the role of market forces, it's basically the same point, so it's reversed the other way around. So if you're saying yes, market forces should be left, maybe the functions of the price mechanism are working really well, and when there are demand supply shifts, changes in the market, we get to equilibrium because of those functions of the price mechanism, and those equilibrium are perfect, they're happy, they're serving consumers and producers well. Or maybe you talk about the benefits of market forces, the innovation benefits, tech advancement benefits, the competition benefits, maybe those benefits are actually meaning markets are working okay or they could work well in the future. But if you're arguing no, go into market failures, go into barriers of market forces that we just mentioned. What if the question says, discuss whether government failure is likely or its most extreme wording, discuss whether it's inevitable, how would you argue, yes, we'll just know your government failure well and link to various policy interventions. Know that government failure can occur if policies are very expensive, if there are unintended consequences that come from policy interventions, but also if governments are lacking information. If there's imperfect information, it means policies could be set too strict, too lax, risk of government failure both ways. So just apply various causes of government failure to policy interventions and you're gonna back up this question. If you're going against the question though saying no, well maybe actually there are serious benefits of policy interventions that might not result in a government failure when the costs of intervention outweigh the benefits. The benefits could be greater than the costs from certain interventions, you might say. You might even say that even if there is a short-run problem with intervention, these policies can be tinkered with over time to make those policies better, to reduce the overall costs of those interventions. But also you might argue, no, given the strength of market failure, like with public goods in the free market, there will be no supply of public goods at all in theory. So any kind of government intervention that encourages public goods actually existing in markets or existing in an economy is going to be beneficial, isn't it? But also serious market failures like climate change, like plastic waste or recycling, like cigarette consumption, excessive drug consumption. If there are really big serious market failures and a huge misallocation of resources, the chance of government failure from policy intervention is going to be much lower. So there you have it. Some awkward kind of market failure essays that might come your way. You're good to go now. Let's do the same with market structure essays. Well, what if a market structure essay reads like this? Discuss whether there should be intervention or whether regulation is necessary in a given market structure or in a given market. How would you argue in favor? Well, your major arguments in favor would be if there is a public interest harm or a risk of that. What does that mean? That means allocative efficiency is being harmed 
or is that risk of being harmed? When can that happen? Well, in very concentrated markets, think monopoly, monopsony, oligopoly, well, there's a risk of allocative inefficiency there, right? So justification for intervention is quite strong, but also any collusive oligopoly, any mergers or anti-competitive practices that are being used, natural monopolies, these are all places or market structures where there is a risk of allocative inefficiency, if not already allocative inefficiency. So that's how you can argue in favor of regulation or intervention. Maybe also you argue in favor if there are good policy options to deal with allocative inefficiency within market structures. You can argue that regulation can do good in that situation. But also if we take very competitive markets, there are dangers there too, like excessive cost cutting, like profiteering that could be immoral or socially undesirable. Maybe there are externalities being ignored. So a role for intervention could be useful in those situations too. Well, what about if you're arguing no, that intervention isn't really that necessary or it's dangerous? Well, maybe you can say that the market structure is working quite well. We're getting relatively allocatively efficient outcomes. Prices are low, uh, consumer surplus is, is quite high, quantities are high, quality is high. Maybe there's good reinvestment taking place. There's innovation or technology advancement. On those grounds, you can argue that, do you know what? Consumers are quite happy. The public interest is being served quite well. So actually there isn't need for regulation or the role for intervention doesn't need to be as strong here. Or maybe you can argue in the future, the market could be working better because the market is contestable. So in the future, there might actually be more firms that enter the market, giving you more allocatively efficient outcomes that way. Or maybe right now, the threat of competition is making firms within the market act more allocatively efficiently. So you argue on the grounds of contestability that the market's actually okay, the role for intervention or regulation isn't so big. Or maybe you just go into the problems of regulation, right, to lean you against intervention, like asymmetric information or unintended consequences or the risk of regulatory capture. Or maybe you argue there are better options. The market maybe isn't working great at the moment, but heavy-handed intervention, an interventionist approach, isn't the best way of doing that. Maybe a more market-friendly approach through privatization or deregulation is preferable in your mind. So there you go. A tricky little question there, but that's how you go about it. What about labor market tricky questions? Well, what if it says whether government should intervene within a labor market? How would you argue in favor of intervention? Well, you could argue that competitive labor markets have still got major problems. For example, if the market is very flexible, there's very easy hiring or firing, you might worry about job security of workers within those markets and maybe regulation is necessary there to improve their job security. But you can also worry about the working conditions of those workers, whether there needs to be more protection of those workers within flexible labor markets. More generally in competitive labor markets, what if there is excessive profiteering or discrimination? Profiteering would be with working conditions, with wages that are offered, which could then lead to inequalities or just discrimination generally that needs intervention to overcome. Or what if markets are not working competitively? There's imperfect competition. For example, there are markets out there with significant wage differentials between them, resulting in very high inequality, a role for intervention therefore. Uh, but also if there is strong monopsony power with restrictions of employment and very exploitative low wages that are being offered or very strong trade union involvement which is causing negative consequences to wider society, to firms who are operating within those labor markets. You can argue then there's a role for intervention to break up the strength of trade unions. How would you argue no, the role for intervention is, is limited or just not necessary at all? Well, if the labor market's working well, you have a very competitive labor market with competitive labor market outcomes that are serving both workers and firms within those markets well. For example, wages are equaling MRP. You have efficient labor market outcomes there, efficient wages being offered. If employment is maximized, efficient outcomes there. If wage differentials between markets are not significant, that's how you can argue, do you know what? The market's working quite well. We don't need massive government intervention, therefore. You might argue with wage differentials, there are benefits of that. There are benefits of some inequality or that there are significant problems that come with government intervention within labor markets, go into those, develop those as arguments against the need for intervention or against intervention completely. And then just reverse those arguments if the question says, discuss whether labor markets should be left alone. Just reverse the arguments, you're good to go with that essay as well. So there you have it guys, tough little long essay questions that might come in your micro exams for a wide variety of topic areas. Hopefully now you realize there's a pattern taking place with these essays, very easy way to form arguments. You can smash the essays regardless. Stay tuned for many more videos coming your way to help you, watch them all. Thanks for watching this one. Can't wait to see you in future videos.